Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel and to a new episode of our SwiftUI series. In this episode, we are going to learn about binding. And let's have a look at the example that I prepared. We have a new button on the left side hand that says height. As soon as we click or tap that, the type of each Pokemon is hidden and we can show it again. And this button actually is a child view that still has access to the state of its parent view, which is our list here. Now let's just dive into it and have a look how it's implemented. The first thing we want to do is introduce a new state variable that is called show details. And based on that, we render or not render the type, right? So let's just do that. Let's call it state. Let's call it, <laughs> let's call it state. So it is a state variable and let's call it show details and say a default value of true. Right, and now the type here, we can make this be dependent on whether or not show details is true. And so if it's true, please render it. If not, well, then never execute that code at all. Perfect, so far so good. How about we add a new button to our navigation and uh, have it as a, as a leading position. So let's just use leading and say it's a button that has as an action, well, it should toggle the show details, right? And toggle is a native implementation of Swift for bool to just switch between the value true and false. Now, the label itself can just say, hmm, it should have a text view, but it should say show or hide dependent on show details, right? And so we can do that as well by saying show details and using the shorthand notation for if else and say, hmm, if it's true, please show hide, and if it's false, please show show. Now, when show details is true, we see details of the Pokemon, which is types, which, which is their types. If it's true, we want to have it a button that have the button say hide, right? So we can hide it. That's why if it's true, we say hide. If it's false, we say, we say we'll show it. Now let's add the comma here and run the app and have a look whether it already works. Spoiler, it does. Now we have a button on the top left corner and if we tap it, it hides and shows and shows and hides the type, right? Because we know how state works. As soon as the value changes, the view gets re-rendered and since it's based partly on that, it will just show or not show the details. Now, how about we are refactoring that view into an own view, a child view, right? So let's just do that. Let's create a new file and pick Swift UI view so we don't have to write our boilerplate code. And uh, we can just call it text toggle button, for example. And I want this view to actually return or have the button implementation right here. So let's just put this up here. So let's just go in our parent view and cut the button out and put it inside here, just like that, without the comma. Now. We are using show details here without having a variable called show details. So we can just declare a variable that says show details, which is of type bool. This is still throwing some errors because we are trying to mutate a variable inside a struct from within our struct, which is not possible by default. We are fixing that by using the binding property wrapper or binding annotation. What this one does is we are saying basically we want this property to be uh, connected to the state property of the parent. We haven't established now uh, yet the connection. However, we are preparing the connection between them both because as soon as we change the show details to true or false, we want the parent view to be re-rendered, right? The state, we want to change the state for the parent view as well. So the view gets re-rendered and therefore it will show or hide the type. How can we establish the connection? Well, first of all, let's comment this one out because it just complains and we will fix that in a second or take care of it in a second. Now we have our child view, right? And this one changes its own local property. However, it's a binding one. And in the parent, we have a state and we can create the connection by when we are instantiating that child view, text toggle button, we're passing in the state variable that we want to create the connection to the child views property. And we have to do that with a dollar sign. That's it. That's all the magic. Nothing more. 
This is how you create a uh, connection between a state from a parent view to the uh, local property of a child view. And as soon as the child view is adjusting or changing the value of its own local property, this will also change the value of the parent's state property. And we know how a state works. It will re-render the whole view. Now this one just missed a, or was missing a comma. We can run the app and we can see that hide and show indeed works. It still works. Although we are in the child view when we are switching true or false. However, through that binding and through the dollar sign by creating that connection to our state variable right here, it is changing that state variable as well. And again, it re-renders the view as soon as values have changed for a state variable. Now the naming here is completely uh, coincidental that it says show details here and show details in a child view. It doesn't matter at all. And that's binding. Let's just fix for sure the preview here. Now for me, it still does not show the preview, although we are fixing now the um, the instantiation of the child view, right? Because the child view expects a state variable being passed in uh, in a way that we are creating a connection to it. Since this one is a static uh, variable, so meaning it's a type variable and not an instance variable, we have to define our state variable here as a static variable as well. And we can call it whatever, literally, and then say true and then pass in whatever. And that's it. Worth noting is that state variables have to have a default value, a binding variable not. And it makes sense because the binding variable does get its value from the state variable that gets passed into the child view, which is then initiating this one with the value. Now hide and show still works. Binding is explained and we have done our episode. I hope, I hope you have learned at least one thing. If so, you can help me out by hitting like. You can leave a comment, thoughts, feedback of any kind. I'm super happy to answer them all. Uh, hit subscribe to not miss out on future episodes on Swift UI, UI Kit, and whatnot all about Swift, even website development. And uh, check out the description box for my merch if you want to support me doing YouTube full time. Also for my Patreon to download every source code of every video tutorial that I ever do. I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.